Hey, we ready? Yeah, yeah, you know how to do it, right? What, I'm muted? I don't see nothing muted. Testing, yet. testing. Okay. Good morning. We want to welcome you to Cornerstone uh, Facebook Live. Uh, for our Sunday school hour, an exciting time of sharing God's word and studying together God's word. We encourage you to uh, invite others to your watch party or you can share this uh, link on your page and your friends will be able to join with us as we are in worship service today, not only at 9 o'clock for Sunday school, but 11 o'clock for worship. Uh, right after Sunday school, we hope you will stay tuned. We have uh, several of our children who have put Easter's, Easter's pizzas together and they have sent those to the church and we will be sharing those during right after Sunday school before our worship experience and so we hope that you will be a part uh, of that as well. We do want to say happy Resurrection Sunday as a reminder that our Christ is no longer in the grave because he has risen just as he said that he would. And so again we want to invite you to grab your Bible, uh, grab your family, Share this on Facebook Live through your watch party so that others can have a glimpse into God's word. Let us pray, and then after our prayer, I will turn it over to Reverend Ernest Baylor. God, thank you so much for this Resurrection Sunday, a reminder that you are no longer in the grave because you have risen just like you said you were. And we pray now that as we study together God's word, that you would help us to be enlightened and encouraged through the truth of your scripture. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Good morning, Sunday School, and welcome to another Sunday School Hour. Glad that you are up on this resurrection morning as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this Easter day. Again, thank you for joining us. I pray that this day serves you well as we celebrate God and all that he's done in our lives and in the lives of others. For this Sunday, the next two Sundays, we will be studying the resurrection, so we'll be in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. So if you have your Bibles, let's prepare to go there. Uh, we, we will be in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 8, and then next Sunday we will be uh, in the following verses in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. However, we will be walking through a lot of scriptures today. Uh, therefore, I'm sitting down because we're going to go through a lot of scriptures, so we're going to take our time to walk through a few scriptures to talk about the resurrection, uh, how Jesus said he was going to do it, how God did it, and who saw it. Uh, so the, you'll see these notes online, and for those that are that are able, you can, you can print out those notes. You'll also see the PowerPoint presentation uh, periodically throughout the teaching. So as we study the resurrection, this is a very foundational and fundamental part of being a believer in Jesus Christ. Because if there is no resurrection, there is no Christianity because we serve what we call a risen savior, a risen savior, one who was dead, but who is yet alive. One who intercedes for us on our behalf. If Jesus has not been risen from the dead and we'll see this next week, then we're still in our sins. If Jesus has not been risen from the dead, what is the reason for our fellowship? What is the reason for us even coming together as a church? Again, those are some of the things we'll see next week. But what we're going to discuss today is the historical fact that Jesus resurrected from the grave. We're going to walk through some biblical texts that show and prove that Jesus rose from the grave. Many of us who are Americans, we grew up studying presidents and, and people in our textbooks. And uh, the first president is George Washington. And though we, we don't have a YouTube video of it, we just believe it because it's in a textbook and it's been historically shown by witnesses uh, that, uh, that either saw him or by witnesses of, of documents that have been written. We believe that there's a such thing as a Martin Luther King Jr. because we've seen the videos and we've seen his writings and we've seen his pictures. We believe that there's a such thing as Shaka Zulu. That was a good movie. I, they need to put that on. That's, that's, it's on is it on Netflix? It's on Netflix. Shaka Zulu's on Netflix? What? All serious. Woo! I know what I'm doing when I get home. We know that Shaka Zulu was a king because we've seen the historical, we've seen the historical notes and uh, we've seen the historical writings. And in the same way that we believe, uh, due to the writings and the witnesses, that there was a George Washington, that there was a Dr. Martin Luther King, that there was a Shaka Zulu, we as believers should know the historical facts that show that Jesus Christ rose from the grave. And the text that we use is the Holy Word of God. 
So we're going to talk about this morning the fact of the resurrection. The fact that Jesus did rise from the grave. Where does it say that in scripture? How can we be comfortable and competent to talk about this when we're talking to others? Because this is the foundation of our faith. Much like the virgin birth, the incarnation of, of Jesus becoming man, and Jesus rising from the grave. These are foundational and pillars of our faith that we need to know. So, some, some of the things that we're going to walk through is Jesus said it, God did it, and people saw it. Again, we're going to walk through Jesus said it, God did it, and people saw it. So, if you have your Bibles, first we're going to go to our foundational scripture. Our foundational scripture is in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and then we'll go to Jesus said it. So, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, you'll find these words for uh, our, our text for the resurrection. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we're going to read verses 1 through 8. It says, Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preach to you, which also you received, and in which you also stand, by which you also are saved, if you hold fast the word which I preach to you, unless you believe in vain. Verse 3. For I deliver to you as of first importance what I received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to scripture. Verse 5, and that he appeared to Cephas, and then to the twelve. After that he appeared to more than 500 brethren at one time, most of whom remain until now, but some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared to me also. A lot of us, when we tell uh, stories about where we've been and uh, people that we know, we are witnesses. We are eyewitnesses to a vacation that we've experienced. We are eyewitnesses to places that we've been. We are, we are witnesses to things that we've experienced and things that we've seen. And because we have seen it, people take our word for it. I remember when I used to be in school uh, uh, and, and I missed a day, which wasn't that many. And I would come back, they would, they would, it always seemed like there was a fight when I wasn't at school. I always seemed like there was a fight. Now this was before cell phones and, and you could record it and it could be online. There was always a fight. And you know what I, I do when somebody told me that there was a fight? I had to ask some questions. I say, did you see it? Who, who started it? What happened? What happened? <laughs> then what happened? Then what happened? But you know what? I wouldn't just take one person's word for it. You know what I would do in second period? Somebody Ask somebody else. Did you see it? What happened? Then what happened? What? And guess what I do in third period? Find somebody else. Did you see it? What happened? What? By fourth period, I act like I was there. Yeah, I was there. I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. Because I've used different witnesses, different stories to validate what happened. And when it comes to the resurrection, we know that the resurrection is a fact. That it did happen because Jesus said it would. God has the power to do it. And people were witnesses to it. And Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 is making it very clear that the resurrection is a part of the gospel, very important to believe, and that people saw it. So now let's go to what, what Jesus said about the resurrection. What Jesus said about the resurrection. And if you turn in your Bibles to Mark chapter 8, we're going to read through three different passages of Jesus talking about his resurrection. So we're going to look at Mark 8, 31, then we'll look at Mark 9, 31, and then we'll go to Mark 10. These are, these are Jesus' words concerning his resurrection. So in Mark chapter 8, Mark chapter 8, verse 31, you'll find these words. It says that Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed after three days rise again. And he was stating the matter plainly 
and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Just, just as an aside, Peter called himself jacking Jesus up. <laughs> he jacks Jesus up. And we might laugh at that, but you know what? Sometimes we try to jack Jesus up too. He give us a word and we say, how dare you? He give us a truth that we need to follow. We say, how dare you? He give us information that we need to apply to our lives. And we say, how dare you say something like that? But that's just, that's just as an aside. But you know what? You know what Jesus told Peter after he got jacked up? He meant say, yeah, get behind me, get behind me. That has nothing to do with this lesson, but that's in, that's in the Bible. That's in the Bible right there, right there. All right, so Jesus began to teach them in verse 31 that he would be killed, uh, he would be rejected, but three days later he would rise again. Let's go, let's turn the page to Mark chapter 9, verse 31, and see what Jesus said here. Mark chapter 9, uh, verse, verse 31, let's start with verse 30. For there, from there they went out and began to go through Galilee. And he did not want anyone to know about it. For he was teaching his disciples and telling them, The Son of Man is to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he has been killed, he will rise three days later. Let's look in Mark chapter 10, verse 33 through 34. Again, Jesus is saying, saying the same thing. He says in verse 33, Behold, we're going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered to the chief priests and the scribes. They will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles. They will mock him and spit on him, scourge him, and kill him. Three days later, he will rise again. So here we have three instances of Jesus knowing and Jesus publicly saying to his followers that he was going to be killed and that he was going to resurrect. I was reading these scriptures, y'all, and, and it just amazed me that our God, our Lord, and our Savior, he knew what was getting ready to happen, and he still proceeded to it. Because when I knew I was going to get a whooping on my way home, I found every excuse to slow down. I walked slower. I found a longer way to get home. I stayed outside a little longer. My mom had already told me, when you get home, you get in the wood. So I would, I would just, I would walk slow. I would try to find every excuse. I even tried to stay after school to do some homework because I knew what was going to happen when I got home. I would slow down. But Jesus never slowed down what he knew was getting ready to come. He embraced it. He said it, and he went through with it. So we have, we already have that. Jesus said it. So before it happened, Jesus said it. All right, now after Jesus said it, let's look at our next section. We want to see that God did it. God did it. So if you have your Bibles, go to Acts chapter 2. We're going to look at a series of scriptures which give credit to the resurrection, to the power of God. God did it. God did it. And this shouldn't amaze us that God can raise somebody from the dead. Because we see early on in the Bible, in the biblical record, that God is able to create out of nothing something with just his word. He says, let there be, and guess what happened? Whoop, there it was. Because he can speak in it, in it itself. So God has power to do anything but fail. So the fact that God did it should not surprise us, but we need to see in the biblical record where it says that God raised Jesus from the grave. So we're going to look at a couple of a couple of sermons that were preached in the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles. And you'll see in Acts chapter 2, verse 24, this is Peter when he's preaching on the day of Pentecost. We'll start with verse 22. He said, men of Israel, listen to these words. Jesus the Nazarene, a man attested to you by God with miracles and wonders and signs, which God performed through him in your midst, just as you yourselves know, this man delivered over by the predetermination plan and knowledge of God, you nailed to a cross by the hands of godless men and put him to death. Verse 24, but God raised him up again, putting an end to the agony of death since it was impossible for him to be held in his power. Here we have a declaration very early on, about a month after Jesus had been resurrected from the grave, that it is being proclaimed that this was done by the power of God. Not only did Jesus say it, but God did it. Let's also go to Acts uh, chapter 2, same chapter, verse 32. Uh, Peter is still, Peter's still preaching. He says, this Jesus 
God raised up again to which we are all witnesses. He's speaking to a group of people at this time that were alive when Jesus died and they were still alive when he was resurrected from the grave. And what he's saying, we saw that. We saw him after he was dead and it was resurrected. We saw him and that is what we're proclaiming to you. They are his witnesses. Let's look at some more scriptures. We're going to be walking through a lot of scriptures today. So Acts chapter 3 verse 15. This again is Peter preaching after uh, him and him and John uh, healed, healed a man. Uh, now this is the second sermon. I'm sorry. Yeah, this is after he healed the lame man. It looks like, yeah. So let's go to Acts chapter 3. Verse 15, it says, uh, verse 14, But you disown the holy and righteous one and ask for a murderer to be granted to you, but put to death the prince of life, the one whom God raised from the dead, a fact to which we are witnesses. So another declaration that God did it. Let's go to uh, Acts chapter 3, verse 26. Peter is still preaching. Uh, it says in 25, It is you who are the sons of the prophets, and of the covenant which God made with your fathers, saying to Abraham, in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. For you first, God raised up his servant and sent him to bless you by turning every one of you from your wicked ways. Again, verse 26, God raised Jesus up. Let's go to Acts chapter 4, verse 10. Walk with me, walk with me. It says, uh, let it be known to you, this is Peter again, let it be known to you, known to all of you, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by this name, this man stands here before you in good health. We might as well read 11 and 12, because it's right. good verses right here. Amen. It says, he is the stone which was rejected by you, the builders, but which became the chief cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. The emphasis here is in Acts uh, chapter 4, verse 10, where the declaration is that God did it. God raised them from the dead. All right, let's keep walking through our scriptures. Let's go to Acts chapter 10, right. verse 40. Acts 10, 40. This is Peter in Acts chapter 10 when he's proclaiming a message now at Cornelius, Cornelius' uh -huh. house. Uh -huh. uh, uh, not Cornelius off soul train. <laughs> <laughs> but this is Cornelius. He was a Gentile, and now the gospel is being preached to them. So Acts chapter 10, verse 40. Uh, where is that at? Verse 40. Let's go back to 38 for some context. This is Peter preaching in Cornelius' house. It says, you know of Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, and how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. 39 says, we are witnesses of all the things he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They also put him to death by hanging him on a cross. Verse 40. God raised him up on the third day and granted that he become visible. Again, the declaration that God raised him up. God, I'm sweating. Y'all give me a second. Water. That coffee is hot. <laughs> you got water. No, you got sir. water. No, sir. I'm sorry I walked off the screen, but that coffee was drinking. I'm drinking that some God, that coffee. Flash. I mean, it's a hot flash. <laughs> God, give me some medicine. <laughs> God, give me. Oh, thank you, Brother Gerald. Woo! God raised the Lord. God turned on some earth. <laughs> Hold on, y'all give me one second. All right. All right. What scripture were we on, y'all? I'm sorry. X 10. Yes. 40. 10 40. Yeah. 10, 40. Okay, God raised them. Again, we're walking through the scriptures. We're walking through the scriptures. Man, that thing dirty. God raised him. Stay focused. Stay focused. God <laughs> raised him up. I got something, Pastor. Thank you. <laughs> hey, come on. Amen. Acts chapter 13. <laughs> Acts chapter 13. God, God did it. Acts chapter 13. Let's look at uh, verse 30. Okay. 
We'll start with, uh, for background, let's go to verse 26 and we'll read down to 30. This is Paul, this is Paul preaching uh, here. It says, brethren, verse 26, sons of Abraham's family and those among you who fear God, to us the message of this salvation has been sent. For those who live in Jerusalem and their rulers, recognizing neither him nor the utterances of the prophets which are read every Sabbath, fulfill, fulfill these by condemning him. And though they found no ground for putting him to death, they asked Pilate that he be executed. When they carried out all that was written concerning him, they took him down from the cross uh -huh. and laid him in a tomb. But God, but God raised him, him from the dead. God did it. And I want y'all to see every time it says God raised him, they make sure that you know that he was dead. Uh -huh. God raised him from the dead. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, uh, uh, verse 11, it says, And the same power that raised Jesus from the grave is the same power that is at work within us. That's just a bonus. I'm going to give you that scripture. If the same power that raised Jesus from the grave is the same power that is operating with us, we can get up from some dead situations. We can get up from some dead circumstances. We can get up from some COVID-19. We can get up from whatever we're facing because the power of God is at work. And if he did it before, the song says he can do it again because he's the same God right now. I wouldn't go for I need to teach this thing. I got excited real quick. Let me, let me dab that off. Look at that. Acts chapter, Acts chapter 30. Let's go to verse 37. God raised them. Let's look at 36. For David... Acts chapter 13, verse 36 says, For David, after he had served the purpose of God in his own generation, he died and was laid among his fathers, and he underwent decay. But he whom God raised did not undergo decay. He was raised, y'all. Let's look at some more scriptures. Let's go to our last one to talk about God did it. Let's go to Romans chapter 10, a very familiar passage. Romans 10. And while you're going to Romans 10, let's just stop at Romans 8, the scripture I was just talking about since we're already on that street. It says in Romans chapter 8, verse, uh, verse, verse 10, it says, If Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, yet the spirit is alive because of righteousness. Here it is right here, verse 11. Look at this, look at this, look at this. But the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. There's power in the resurrection and that same power is within us to live a sanctified life, to live a life that's free, pleasing to God. He gives us the power. You know what? Just back up one block to Romans chapter 6 as well. This is not in the notes, but it's just uh, it, it's, it's, it's good for us. To, it's good for us to know it. Romans chapter 6, verses 4, we're going to read 4, 5, and uh, uh, 6. It says, Therefore we have been buried with Christ through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. That verse just said, just as Jesus received new life from God, God gives us the power to walk in new life by the same resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead. And many of us are witnesses and testimonies of the resurrection power of Jesus because we used to be dead, but now we're alive. We were dead in addictions, we were dead in relationships, we were dead in sinful lifestyles. But when you look at me now, I'm a changed man, I'm a changed woman because God has raised me from the dead. So a lot of times, you might not have the witness of scripture, you might not have the witness of God doing it, but you got the witness of your life. And if somebody wants to know, has God raised Jesus from the dead? You say, just take a look at me because I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but now I see. I once was dead, but I yet alive right now. This is getting good at y'all. This is getting good. This is getting good. This is getting good. So not only do we have that Jesus said it, but we got the witness that God did it. Now let's continue to look at the biblical record of people saw it. Now we got a lot of scriptures to walk through right here. People saw it. People saw it. Okay. People saw it. So let's, now after Jesus was resurrected from the grave, he made sure to show himself to his 
to his followers, and even to some unbelievers. He made sure mm. to show himself. Come on. Because he didn't want it to be thought that somebody stole his body, or that he wasn't really dead in the first place, or that he really didn't die. He showed himself to multiple, multiple people, and that's why we can attest to the fact that the resurrection is a fact. He was really dead, and now he's yet really alive. So let's walk through a couple of these scriptures. You go back to Matthew, Matthew chapter 28. The first thing that happened before Jesus resurrected or before a witness uh, saw Jesus is that the, the tomb or the, the, the stone in front of the tomb had to be rolled away. And a lot of times we forget that when Jesus was buried, there were guards at his tomb mm -hmm. because people believe that Somebody was going to come, his followers were going to come and try to steal his body. So they put guards at his tomb. Even in death, Jesus, they, had to, they tried to put Jesus on lockdown, even in his death. So in, in Matthew chapter 28, verses 2 through 4, let's see what the guards saw. It says in verse 1, Now after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the grave. And behold, a severe earthquake had occurred. Mm -hmm. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, came and rolled away the stone, and sat up on it. Come on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check, check out what it, look, look how big, how clean he was in verse 3. And his appearance was like lightning, and his clothes as white as snow. Verse 4, the God shook for fear of him and became like dead men. And you know, sometimes sometimes we hear and we see earthquakes, but you know what? That might be God moving. Yeah, yeah, and we yeah. need to have the ability to connect things that happen in the natural, what God is doing in the supernatural, to connect things that we see, what God is doing in the unseen world. So God, you, we might call it tectonic plates rubbing together, or we might give a scientific definition yeah, of it, yeah, yeah. but it might be an angel just touched down on it. <laughs> and the word says that an earthquake happened, and when the earthquake happened, an angel had rolled away the stone. In fact, the matter is he didn't roll away the stone so Jesus could get out. He rolled away the stone so that we could look in. Because he oh, didn't need to have rolling no stone back. So it wasn't for Jesus. Yeah, it was man. for us to see what had happened. And yeah. the Bible says that when that when he rolled the stone away, the guards were like dead men. Because they saw it. But check game. They ran and reported what they saw. And look what happened. Look at verse 11. Look at verse 11. Now, while they were on their way, that's talking about the, the women, some of the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priest all that happened. So they go back and say, it was an earthquake, the stone rolled away, and this dude showed up, and he was clean. He was clean. He was sharp. He looked like lightning. And we could, they said, what you say? I couldn't say nothing because I felt like I was dead. I was scared. I was scared. They telling the story. Hey, you ever told the story when you were scared? You just, and, then, and you just running, running at your back because you're scared, you're anxious. So they telling the story to the chief priest. Verse 12, and when they had assembled with the elders and consulted together, they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers, paid them off, and said, you ought to say his disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. And if, and if this should come to the governor's ears, we will win him over and keep you out of trouble. So the guards are a witness that something happened yeah. on that first Easter morning. Something happened. Let's look at, uh, staying in Matthew 28. Verse 1 uh, and 5, we see that we see the witness of the women who came to the tomb. You also have the same, and also in Mark chapter 16, Luke 24, John 20. This is when the women came, the women came to the tomb. We already read verse 1. We'll read it again. Now, after the Sabbath, uh, Matthew 28, it was dawn toward the first day of the week. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came and looked at the grave. Look at verse 5. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you're looking for Jesus, for he has been crucified. He is not, not here. here. Why he not here, y'all? He has risen just as he said. See, Jesus said it. God did it. And it says, come see the place where he is laying. Go quickly and tell the disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Uh, let's look at some, some, other, some other sections. Let's go to John chapter 20. When Mary, when Mary saw him and thought he was the gardener, thought he was cutting the grass and uh, didn't realize that it was Jesus. Thought that uh, he was doing some weed eating. That was Jesus. Uh, John, chapter, John chapter 20. These are the people that saw it. Hopefully you're taking notes of these scriptures so that you can help walk people through the, the eyewitnesses of the resurrection. 
So John chapter 20, verse 11 through 17, it says, Mary was standing outside the tomb weeping. And so as she wept, she stooped and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had been lying. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, verse 14, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned around and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, well, hold on now, stop clinging to me. For I have yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I ascend to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. The, uh, wit that was a witness. That was a witness. Also, let's look at Mark chapter 16, verse 9 through 11. Same story. A different view. Mark 16. Now, after he had risen early on the first day of the week, he first appeared to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. She went and reported to those who had been with him while they were mourning and weeping. When they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they refused to believe it. But Mary went, Mary was the first preacher of the gospel. She went evangelizing and telling, and telling others that Jesus is alive. All right, let's look at um, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and 5. Let's go to our, our, our Sunday school lesson, 1 Corinthians 15, which gives us a, a list of people who saw Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. All right. Talking about the witnesses. It says after he was uh, buried, verse 4, he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Now Cephas is uh, Peter. That was the Cephas was the name that um, God had given to, to Peter for the rock. And it says he appeared to, to Peter. Now we don't have a gospel account of that, but we have the account in, in the Bible that says he appeared to Peter. And then he appeared, he appeared to the twelve. Now, it's, it's, it's key that we, we see that he appeared to Peter because uh, three days before, Peter was the one that had denied him. Peter was the one, matter of fact, he cussed out a little old girl and told her that he did not know Jesus. <laughs> poor, poor baby, cuss that baby out. In the, in the name of Jesus, he cussed out. <laughs> So he had to appear to Peter to get his confidence, to get his confidence level, to get his confidence level uh, back up and let him know that I am alive. Yeah. He also appeared to some disciples as they were walking to the, on the road uh, to, to Emmaus. And you have that scripture reference there. Let's go to Mark chapter 16. Again, these are the witnesses. These are the witnesses that Jesus is alive. So Mark 16, we're going to look at... Uh, verses 12 through 13, and a longer account of this is in Luke 24, verses 13 through 35, and we'll just look at the shorter version in Mark 16, verses 12 through 13. And it says, after that, he appeared in a different form to two of his disciples while they were walking along on their way to the country. They went away and reported to others, but they did not believe them either. So again, this is appearance that Jesus is making. He's appeared to the women. He's appeared to Peter. He's appeared to two additional, he's appeared to two additional disciples. Was, while we're in Mark, let's go to uh, verse 14 to see Mark chapter 16, uh, verse 14. This is where he appeared to the disciples. It says, after he appeared to the, after, afterward, he appeared to the 11 disciples themselves as they were reclining at the table. And he reproached them for their unbelief and their hardness of heart because they had not believed those who had seen him after he had risen. So again, he's appeared to the women, he's appeared to Peter, he's appeared to two men on the road to Emmaus, now he's appearing to the, uh, 11, the 11 disciples. 
Also, if you go to uh, Luke chapter 24, you'll see this played out as well. Continue to walk with me through the scripture. I told you we had a lot of ground to cover today. Luke 24, verses 36 through 43. So this is right after the two, the two men from a man uh, that were walking to a man's have reported their story to the disciples. It says, verse 36, while they were telling these things, Jesus himself stood in their midst and said to them, peace be to you. Let me, let me tell you something real quick. In John, it talks about this same story that the disciples were in a locked room. They were shut up. They, were, they had locked the doors. They had drawn the blinds. They had let the windows down and locked all the windows so nobody could get in. Nobody could get in. They set the alarm. They were looking at the ring bell when everybody run. They were just checking out who at the door, who at the door, who that, who that, am I going to let them in or not? It was so locked up, couldn't nobody get in or out. And guess what Jesus did? Right he just down. popped right on up in there. He just showed up. That just lets you know you can't lock Jesus out. All right. You cannot lock out Jesus. I might have to preach that one day. You can't lock Jesus out. I'm going to get that. I'm going to get that. So Jesus shows up. He shows up, but they were startled and frightened, verse 37, and thought they were seeing a ghost, or thought they were seeing a spirit. And he said to them, why are you troubled? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. So these are witnesses. They were able to handle Jesus and touch Jesus. After he came, he walked through the door without even, without even opening it. Let's look at some other, some other appearances. Let's go to John chapter 20, verse 26 and 29. Because when Jesus first appeared to the disciples, Thomas was not there. So they called Thomas. So they said, man, we just saw Jesus. And nah, he ain't seen no Jesus. You ain't seen him. You ain't seen him. He said, unless I, unless I touch him. I don't believe that he's rose from the dead. So Jesus said, all right, I, I got you, Thomas. I got you. So in John chapter 20, verses 26 through 29, we see these words. After eight days, so this is a whole week later. So it's been a whole week since Jesus has resurrected from the grave. After eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas with them. Jesus came.